Hello, and welcome to Algebra 2, Chapter 5.2, Solving Quadratic Equations by Factoring. So what we're going to do the rest of the chapter is actually solve a quadratic equation. In 5.1, all you did was graph the quadratic equation. So since this is called solving by factoring, a little review of factoring. Uh, remember, a trinomial uh, can typically be factored into two binomials. So if we look at the trinomial x squared plus 8x plus 15, it can be factored into x plus 3 and x plus 5. And what two factor means is to write it as multiplication. So generally, and this is um, just an example here, typically we multiply two numbers and we get the product. Factoring is starting with the product and going backwards and figuring out what those two factors are. And for a trinomial, those two factors are typically binomials. And so once you have it factored, you can check to see that you factored it correctly by foiling. And a good rule of thumb when you're factoring something in the form ax squared plus bx plus c is that you're looking for factors of c that add to b. And that would really be if a was 1, but we'll address some of those. So the first thing to do is, let's see if you remember how to factor. So here's some examples. The first one is x squared minus 2x minus 48. And so I would suggest you start by drawing two sets of parentheses. And the first question is what times what is going to multiply to be x squared? And the answer to that is x. x times x is x squared. And then what you put here is going to multiply to be negative 48. And for it to multiply to be a negative 48, you are going to have to have one of each sign. Now, I don't put my signs in until the end, um, but you are going to have to have one of each sign. And the deal then is that we want it to add to be negative 2 or, or, or 2. So what are our factors of 48? Well, you got 1 and 48. You got 2 and 24. Uh, 3 and 16, 4 and 12, uh, 6 and 7, no, 6 and 8, 6 and 8. All right, so we're looking for them to make 2. 6 and 8 make 2. And it doesn't matter which one is 6 or which one is 8, so there we go. But what is going to matter is where I put my plus sign, where I put my minus sign. So if I want them to add to be a negative 2, I'm going to want a negative 8x plus 6x, because that is going to add to be a negative 2. And if we look, so right there is your answer. That is our answer. But if we foil this out, we're going to get x squared minus 8x plus 6x minus 48. And if you simplify that, that gets you back to where we started. All right, so the next one here, we're going to start with two binomials. What times what is x squared? That's x times x. I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to be 6 and add to be 5. And by the way, they're both positive because they multiply to be a positive, which means they have the same sign. And they add to be a positive, which means they're both going to be positive. And that's going to be plus 2 plus 3. Okay, next one, x and x. This time they're going to have different signs because they multiply to be a negative. And we're looking for factors of 36 that add to be 9. I believe that is 3 and 12. Okay, and then sign-wise, I want them to add to be a positive number. So if I do a positive 12x minus 3x, that will give me 9x. Okay, x and x here, we're trying to um, multiply to be 80 and add to be 21. And so um, 1 and 80, 2 and 40, 3 doesn't go into it, uh, 4 and 25, 
and 16. Ah, there we go. 5 and 16 would make 21. So 5 and 16. Because this is positive, they have to have the same sign. The only way you can multiply to be a positive is if you're multiplying two numbers with the same sign. But they're adding to be a negative, in which case they're both going to be negative. Negative 16x minus 5x is a negative 21x. Okay, so what happens if your leading coefficient is not a 1? Well, you're going to look at two options here. You're either looking at 4y and 1y, or you're looking at 2y and 2y. And we don't know yet which one it is until you kind of get in there and play around with them. Um, I'm going to take a stab in the dark and try the 2y and 2y one. Uh, 3 can only be 1 and 3, so this one doesn't matter where the 1 and 3 are. They are opposite signs, and I'm trying to get a negative 4y out of it. So if I said negative 6y, because right there would be a negative 6y, plus 2y, because there would be a positive 2y, that gets me a negative 3 at the end and a negative 4y in the middle. There's your answer. Lots of this is just kind of trial and error. So for this next one here, 5x and x is the way that you make 5x squared. And so for 14, you're looking at 1, 14, 2, and 7. Okay, so where are we going to put some numbers? Let's try 2 and 7. So that would be 7x and 10x, and they're both the same sign, and they're both positive. There you go. I know it was a long slide, but hopefully that refreshes your memory on factoring. In case you've forgotten, there are several different special factoring patterns that you should look out for. The first one is a difference of two squares, and it's going to look like um, x squared minus 64. So both terms are something squared, so this is x that's being squared minus, this is 8 that's being squared, and it fits into the pattern a plus b, a minus b, so here we have our a and our b. And so you're looking at x minus 8 and x plus 8. The other one that you need to look for is a perfect square trinomial. And the first term is something squared, the last term is something squared, and the middle term is twice the product of the first term and the last term, or the square root of the first term and the last term. So that mo might look like x squared minus 10x plus 25. So you're looking at this as x that's being squared, this is 5 that's being squared. If I multiply x times 5 together, I'm going to get 5x, and then I'm going to double it, so I'm actually doing this one. So there, that part would give me the 5x, and I'm going to double it. There's my 10x. So there's a, there's b. This factors into x minus 5 squared. And the last thing to keep in mind is to always look for a greatest common factor and you always want to pull it out first and it will make your factoring easier. So let's look at some examples. So several examples to look at. Uh, the first one is 16y squared something squared. Yes, it's 4y squared. And it's 225 something squared. I believe it is 15 squared. And so this is a difference of squares. So it factors into 4y plus 15 and then 4y minus 15. The second one, you're going to look to see if this is a perfect square trinomial. So this first one is 2z that's being squared. The last one is 3 that's being squared. If you multiply those together, you get 6z. If you double it, you get 12z. So this is a perfect square trinomial. 2z minus 3 and, oh, and just 2z minus 3. So I should probably write it 2z minus 3 squared. The next one here, 
I'm going to look again to see if it's a perfect square trinomial. This is 6w that's being squared. This is 5 that's being squared. Multiply those together, you get 30w. Times it by 2, you get 60w. So this is 6w plus 5 squared. All right, why don't you pause and see if you can work out the other four. All right, so let's see how you did. On the first one, first of all, it has the greatest common factor of 2, and then once you pull that out and you're left with 7x squared plus x minus 6, that factors again. The second one only has a greatest common factor of 3v, and then when you pull that out, you get v minus 6, which can't factor again, so you're done. Uh, back up to this first one here real quick. Remember, you factor until you can no longer factor, so that one you need to, you, that's why you factored again there. Uh, the third one had a greatest common factor of 3, and once you pull that out, that can't factor. And you know it can't factor because you have tried to factor it. Okay, and the last one, when you pull out the 4, which is the greatest common factor, it leaves you with a difference of squares, which factors. And so you need 4 times u plus 3 times u minus 3. So what we're going to do now is actually solve a quadratic by factoring. And so when we write it in standard form now, and sorry, I forgot to change that 2 to a squared, it's going to be ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. And so notice that from our standard form in 5, 1, that was y equals, we're now having it equal to 0. And because I want to find the zeros, and the zeros are the answers. And that's why then we set it equal to 0, because you're looking for when y is 0. And remember that y is 0 anywhere there's an x-intercept. So x-intercepts, roots, zeros, they all mean the same thing. That, in this case, is your answer. So to solve by factoring, you're going to factor the left-hand side. Then you're going to use your zero product property that says if you have a times b equals zero, you're going to set a equal to zero, you're going to set b equal to zero, and in which case they could both equal zero, and you're going to solve those. Okay, so let's see what this looks like. So first step, make sure it's equal to zero. Okay, so the first one here is equal to zero. Second step, factor. Okay, I'm going to check to see if this is a different or a perfect square trinomial because this is 3t that's being squared here, and this is 2 that's being squared here. So if I multiply those together and I get 6t and I times it by 2, there's my 12. So this is a difference of squares. So this is going to be 3t minus 2 squared equals 0. Okay. Um, at the moment, so that we don't get too far ahead of ourselves, that could be written out like this, and then what you do is you set each binomial equal to zero. In this case, you don't need to solve both of them because they're both going to give you the exact same answer. And so we have t equals two-thirds. So what does it mean when a, when a quadratic only has one answer? Uh, that's close. But what it's going to mean is that it only hits the x-axis with one point. So the vertex is actually on the x-axis. So the second one here, you have to make equal to zero. And my suggestion is going to be to always have a positive x squared. So I'm actually moving the stuff to the right instead of the left because I want a positive x squared and I'm going to write it in descending order. I'm going to set it equal to zero. Once it's equal to zero you're going to factor it. So remember you're in this case you're looking for factors of four that add to three so it was four and one. Make sure you get the right signs in there. So you want to make sure that you have foiled it to, so that you factored it correctly. You set both factors equal to zero, and you're going to solve them. Okay, so here I have two answers, and what this means is that those are actually my x-intercepts. This 
parabola crosses, and this opens up, crosses at negative 1 and positive 4. That you don't have to graph it, all you're after are these intercepts. Okay, so let's do one more like this. Um, so you really want a positive, in this case, w squared. So I'm going to go ahead and move everything to the left-hand side. So I'm going to get 3w minus 33, 3w squared, minus 33w equals 0. So it has to be equal to 0. I have a greatest common factor here of 3w, so I'm going to pull that out, and I'm left with w minus 11. Now what I have is two factors. 3w is a factor, and w minus 11 is a factor. So we are going to set both factors equal to 0. There's one of your answers. That's not a W. Let me try again. There's your other answer. Alright, so a word problem just so you can see one. A painter is making a rectangular canvas for her next painting. She wants the length to be four feet more than twice the width. So right now, I would draw a rectangle. And she wants the length, here's my length, uh, let's make that my width. Here's my length, here's my width. She wants the length to be four feet more than twice the width. So you set the width, so we're going to make the width be x because the length is in terms of the width. And then so twice the width plus four is going to be the length. And the area is 30. And so what are the dimensions? Well, if area equals length times width, I'm actually going to write it like this then. 30 equals, I'm going to do x times 2x plus 4. Now the deal is that the right-hand side is already factored, but the left-hand side is not equal to 0. So you actually have to distribute that x. Okay, move the 30 over so that it's equal to 0, and then factor. And I've noticed now that I have a greatest common factor, so I'm going to pull that out. And then refactor again, 0 equals 2 times, it's going to be x and x, and plus 5 minus 3. Okay, and so really you should set the 2 equal to 0 because you have three factors here, but 2 equal to 0 makes no sense, but by the way sometimes that might be a variable there. So minus 5, we're going to get x equals negative 5, and plus 3, we're going to get x equals 3. So x is the width of this painting. Well, can a width of a painting be negative 5? No. So we throw that one out. So the width of the painting is 3, and this would be 3 feet, and then the length is going to be twelve time, or 2 times 3, which is 6 plus 4, which is 10 feet. And if I multiply those together, I do get 30 square feet. Uh, so just a little change in terminology real quick is that if you're asked to find the zeros, that means the same thing as solving, you are looking for where these parabolas cross the x-axis. We're just doing it without graphing them. So ideally what you're looking at here in intercept form, is it factored? Okay, and the, so that's what we're trying to do to these is to factor them so that they're in intercept form because that's what I want are those intercepts. So if it says find the zeros, you're going to set y equal to 0. We're going to factor this. There's no greatest common factor, so we're looking at 3x and x. And we're going to look at positive 5. Okay, one more for you. 
Uh, you own an amusement park that averages 75,000 visitors per year who each pay $12 admission charge. You plan to lower the admission price to attract new customers. It has been shown that each dollar decrease in price results in 15,000 new customers. What admissions price should you charge to maximize your annual revenue? What is the maximum revenue? So we want to first look and see, well, where, what equation can I write that's going to model this? 